So what's the next step in our real world VBA task? Well, let's get straight into the download file. And we've got to think again about Eric's requirements. And Eric is saying he wants four sheets. And on the first sheet, a list of people who only appear on one sheet. The second sheet, a list of people who appear on two sheets. List of people who appear on three sheets. List of people who appear on four sheets. So this is the next step in our task. This is what we're going to have to do. Now to help us do this, this total column that we put that we put in two videos ago is going to be super helpful for us because this tells us how many sheets does each person appear on. So this is certainly going to help us. But before we really get into the code. Let's think about how many sheets we've got in the file, the sheet structure, because we're gonna need four more sheets to store these names as Eric requires. Before we create those sheets, I'm just looking at this file and the names seem quite long, which means there's not much room down at the bottom. There's not much room here for multiple sheets. We're gonna to have to have 10, 12 sheets in the file. So let's get ahead of this if you like, and let's change the sheet names to something shorter. So the TX sheet, Alt O H R on the Windows PC, quickly change the name to TX. Onto the next sheet, Alt O H R, NYC, let's change that to NY. Next sheet, Alt O H R, AZ customers, change that to AZ. Next sheet, Alt O H R, shortcut on the Windows PC. MO customers becomes MO. We can see already we've created lots more room down at the bottom of the screen. And if we work with multiple sheets, that's going to help us navigate quickly. Now, one point you'll notice that the NYC customer sheet, which is now the NY sheet, we could have called it NYC, but why not keep the sheet naming consistent? Keep it consistent. All of the sheet names consist of two characters that might just help us in the future and make the programming easier. So now we've got fewer sheets in the file, easier to manage. No, the same number of sheets, shorter names, shorter names. Let's put additional sheets in. We need four sheets to store these names. So one, two, three, four sheets. And then we've got to think of a suitable sheet name. Again, a short name is going to be helpful. Let's say one L. One L, that's going to have the names that appear in one list and then the next sheet, Alt O H R, 2L, and then the next sheet, Alt O H R, 3L, next sheet, Alt O H R, 4L. So we've got our four sheets there. These sheets are going to store the sheet names. Let's just do, do some reordering so that those kind of groups of sheets appear together. So that seems uh, to be a good setup to allow us to get this job done. So again, we're doing some planning preparation that's going to make the coding easier let's go back to the analysis sheet and get the vba editor open and then let's try to think clearly and conceptually about what we're trying to do well firstly we're going to have a new routine here we're going to have a new routine because i see these two this task is divided into a number well two discrete tasks the first task was collating all the names in the file into a table the second task is separating those names across sheets to create those lists that Eric needs. So it's sensible for me uh, to have another routine here. So we're gonna have two routines uh, working together, calling one routine from the other routine. That's preferable to having one long routine. It means we can modulate the code generally easier to work with. So let's give the routine um, an informative name. Let's just say names two sheets here names two sheets and then i'm gonna create some space here so that it's all nicely uh in your screenshot okay so what do we want to do well we're gonna have to loop through the names loop through the names on the analysis sheets and then according to the value in column h according to the value in this column we want to direct that name to a particular sheet for example luna uh, she wants to go to the 2L sheet. Elsie, she wants to go to the 3L sheet. So as always, talk it out loud. Is the concept clear in our heads? Only after the concept is clear do we get into the VBA editor. So what's the first thing we want to do? Well, we want to loop through. We want to loop through the names. Loop through the names. So 
that's something we've done previously so is there a construct that we already have and that we know is working that we could use to help us here well looking in the previous routine i know this code and it's easier because of the annotations because of the comments that we put in the last video i know this code is going to help us to loop through a list loop through a little data set like we've got there i'm just going to switch over to the other side of the screen so this is a starting point for us we're going to need uh, the range variable again so dim chris cell as range and then yeah so this is the beginning this is our starting point we need to do some make some adaptions here if you like so we're going to start on cell c7 rather than cell b2 cell c7 there and then cell c7 here so we're making some assumptions here of course we've spoken already in the series about the assumptions we're making we're assuming that this data set is always going to begin on cell c7 there's other assumptions we're making we're assuming that there's no gaps there's no gaps in this data set because this very powerful coding construct goes down to the first gap that it gets to if there's a gap in the data set it's not going to work so if i was doing uh, a real job for a client i'll write all these assumptions down on another sheet in the file so that the customer is aware of the assumptions if these things happen the file isn't going to work so always write those assumptions down okay so this looks reasonable so we need to close this loop uh, next chris cell close that loop and let's just uh, repeat the comment here so you might say well chris but it's obvious what's happening there because the code is very close together yes but later we're going to have lots more code in here and it's not going to be so obvious so we're just going to say n loop through entries we've also got to close the width constructs with with uh, with width with end width and then we can say ends with this with the analysis sheet okay and then this counter variable is now going to be analysis now previously we were using a variable so we didn't need the speech marks now we're using a sheet name so we do need the speech marks there so this seems reasonable to me just a quick uh, name check a quick sense check rather does it look reasonable yes and let's start by as always a quick test let's just externalize if you like the value of the first cell in this range that we've identified here control s save the file f8 key and then we've popped up with luna Paminja there so created the basic structure if you like of the code done a little test everything is going okay so far so next we've got to think how are we going to communicate to excel uh, what sheet to go to here so we've got the numbers here but these aren't quite the sheet names but maybe we could concatenate concatenate that number it just means join together join together that number with the l because remember our sheet names are a number and l a number and l so yeah, how about this? Uh, as a concept, if you like, let's just take the values and join them together with an L, use that, see if we can reference the sheet in that way. So that's our concept. Let's see if we can get it working. And to do that, well, there's a number of different ways we could do that. Let's use a variable to kind of store this con concatenation. And this is going to be a string because it's going to contain a, going to contain that sheet name and then let's say let's flip over to the other side here and then let's say a target sheet equals target sheet equals um chris cell dot offset now we know that the these are the chris cells over here so we want to offset by one two three uh five cells here five cells one two three four five and then join the l on concatenate this with an l so zero columns uh, zero rows rather five columns across so let's say dot value for completeness and then uh, the and sign that's going to allow us to do this concatenation and l okay then let's just say target message box in fact we're not going to use the message box this time we'll just hover 
the arrow over the cursor to allow us to find out the value in this variable here. Right, so what are we expecting to happen? We're expecting uh, the, a string to be assigned to this target sheet variable, and it's gonna be the value in this cell and an L. So firstly, 2L is what we're expecting here, but we're never quite sure with VBA. Control there, save the file. F8 key on the Windows PC, you can use debug and step into. F8 key and okay. So when the line of code is highlighted, it hasn't executed the line of code yet. F8 key one more time. So I'm taking the cursor, the, my little arrow, hovering it over the target sheet variable. I can see the value is now 2L. So for Luna, for the first person, it's 2L. And then for the second person, it should again be 2L. That's good because it's Allison. And then for the third person, it should be 3L because the value for the third person is three. F8 key, stepping through the code, and we can see we've got a value of three L there. So our idea of taking the number, connecting it with an L seems to be working, but that's not really useful to us yet. Um, so let's see if we can use this technique to reference the sheet and to actually put something on that sheet. And let's just say, Let's put the name in the top left corner of the sheet. So you might want to stop the video, think about how you might do that. So I'm happy with this line of code. Let's just say, um, for, uh, let's say configure, configure sheet name. And then we're going to say sheets, the variable name. So we don't need our speech marks now because we have a variable there dot range a1 and then just see if we can get the name to appear in a1 there okay so not going to be particularly useful to us what's going to happen well excel is going to go through the list go through the list and take each of those names onto the appropriate sheet so for example luna is going to go onto the 2l sheet in a1 but uh, we're going to overwrite we're going to overwrite the values as we go through. So in the end, we're just going to have the one of the names at the bottom. So what do I mean here? Not explaining myself very well, as usual. So we've got the names at the bottom here. So for example, on the 2L sheet, well, uh, Marianne uh, uh, is, the, is the last name with a value of two. So we'd expect her name to appear on the 2L sheet because her name will be the last name that overwrites the previous name. Then Roy on the three sheet, uh, Greg on the one sheet, and then do we have a four somewhere? And then, yep, Stacy on the four sheet. That's what we're expecting to happen. But as always, we're not sure with VBA, control let's save the file. Just do a quick sense check of the code. Does it look reasonable? Have we made any silly mistakes? Looks reasonable enough. Control let's save the file. Gonna just play the code, F5 key. Don't have any errors, that's a good thing. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to, I'm now on the 1L sheet and I can see I've got Greg's name there. Let's go to the 2L sheet, Marion's name. The 3L sheet is Roy, and then the 4L sheet is Stacy. So that code seems to have worked. So that's as far as we'll go in this video, but hopefully you can see, you're getting a feel for how to work through these VBA tasks, have the concept, put some code in, test it, then we move on to the next step. See you in the next video.